Guess what, Lions? For as little as $5 a month, you can get access to exclusive bonus audio content and help this program grow by joining the Lions of Liberty Pride. To learn more, head over to lionsofliberty.com slash support. That is what life is about. Picking yourself up, putting your boots on, saying, okay, it's all right. I got hit. I got beat this time, but I'm not going to let it beat me long term. What's up, my kitties? Welcome back to another edition of Lions of Liberty, the flagship OG program here on the Lions of Liberty podcast feed. Of course, I am not alone here on this feed. Every Wednesday, you've got Brian McWilliams delivering a shot of comedy, culture, and liberty, as well as John Odermatt every single Friday taking a look at the broken criminal justice system on Felony Fridays. Got a ton going on here. All you got to do is hit that subscribe button. And you get it all. And believe it or not, you are now listening to the 301st episode of this program. Oh, that's right. We just crossed the 300 episode threshold last week when I had Jason Stapleton and Larry Sharp on the show for a great conversation. Be sure to go check that out if you somehow missed it. But for now, for today's show, you can find the show notes over at lionsofliberty.com slash 301. That's where I'll be posting links to everything I discuss with today's guests, as well as a link to our sponsor today, which is martinarmory.com. Guys, this is an awesome website if you're in the market for a gun. The business was started by Chris Martin. He was a successful businessman, but he really wanted to start a business that he was passionate about, and he's very passionate about firearms and gun ownership, so he started Martin Armory. And right now, Chris is offering free shipping to listeners of this program. So head on over to martinarmory.com, pick out an awesome firearm, and type in the code LIONS at checkout, L-I-O-N-S, to get free shipping on your order. With me today is the executive producer of Liberty Link Media Group, a video production company dedicated to producing high-quality video content for the Liberty Movement. I am pleased to welcome Nicholas Wieser. Nick, are you ready to roar? Yes, I am. All righty, Nick. And Nick, you know, I typically start off asking my guests how they first became interested in libertarian ideas, and and that's certainly going to come into play through the course of our conversation. But I really want to start off asking you more specifically uh, about one of your own stories, about your own difficult times with the state. So could you start off just telling us what exactly happened with uh, a small tech company that you owned and and how that got shut down? Sure, sure. First of all, thanks for for having me on the show. Of course. We're still in... The court battle, we're still dealing dealing with a lot of issues uh, pertaining to it. So I'll keep it somewhat vague and somewhat short, but I had a long, successful career in uh, the television industry and was asked to uh, be a silent investor in a tech company. And uh, unfortunately, I uh, didn't really realize going into the industry just how many charlatans were in the industry and how terrible, unfortunately, uh, the reputation of the industry was. So I, I hired a multi-million dollar global media company to handle all referrals for us. If I knew then what I do now, I probably just would have gotten out of the industry altogether. But their job was to do everything they needed to make sure that the uh, the person, the company or the individual was qualified and was a good lead for us and then send us the referral. And all we had to do was do the work for them. And we paid a, a huge amount of money for those referrals just so that we could do the work on the back end. Well, along comes the state, sues us for an ungodly amount of money, money that we didn't have, profit that we never earned, and said that we were responsible for anything that this media company did, which we had no idea what they did. And when our lawyers, of course, asked them why they wouldn't go after the company who was responsible for getting the customers in the first place, they said that they didn't have the resources. Later, we found out that it was it had everything to do with the company, the ties between them and the FTC and the Attorney General of Florida and Microsoft. It was the cronyism was so 
it's a longer story than than <laughs> than we can get into in the short period of time we have today. But it was uh, it it literally destroyed our family business. And thank God somebody came along last year and took an interest in the story, Cody Fairfield, and really was responsible for putting some life back in my step. I, I had been, I, I really felt defeated by what had, had taken place. I, I, I'd lost all faith in our system and the justice system, I, everything. I, I'm a firm believer that you can, you can learn things from everybody. It doesn't matter whether or not you know, you're, you're, you're younger than you, less experienced than you, uh, of a different political belief or ideology than you. You can learn something from everyone. I learned something. I learn things every day from my six-year-old son. So he taught me a very important lesson, and that is that I should always focus and go back to what's important to me and what I love and what I'm passionate about. And I took what I knew was such a corrupt, disgusting situation and and tried to turn that into a positive. And, And that's how Liberty Link Media was formed. Wow. Well, there, there you go. I mean, that, that's that's great. You're able to do that. And even more interesting to me is that you were able to, to find that inspiration from your six year old son. Can you can you tell me a little bit more about how that kind of came about? Yeah, sure. I mean, well, when I say that, I feel like a lot of times as libertarians, we're in an echo chamber. No, get out of here. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. I've never noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, you know, we, we spend so much time talking to one another and you know, calling out status and calling out all of these people who you know, social justice warriors and all the people who we disagree with, we don't take any time to look at what they do right or what what maybe there is about whether it's their ideology or the way that they conduct themselves that might be beneficial for the future. And it's the same thing. Uh, so again, going back to my son, my six year old, I mean, he just playing in the playoff championship game is baseball game. He was called up. He's six years old. He was playing on a seven and nine year old team. And it was tough for him because he went from being the best player to one of the worst uh, in a very short period of time. Was he like a, one of those all stars that's just killing it at double A and then they, they just they suck him up to the majors and suddenly he's up there with in the big leagues? Yeah, exa- <laughs> exactly. So then he's there and and, you know, they, they lost the championship game. They came in second place. And the coach was going around and asking all of them what they learned during the baseball season. And everybody, wow, I learned how to hit. I learned about some of the rules, first, second, third. My son said, I learned how to be a good sport. And that, to me, I mean, I, that, that was everything to me because that is what life is about. Picking yourself up, putting your boots on, saying, okay, it's all right. I got hit. I got beat this time, but I'm not going to let it beat me long term. Certainly an inspiring lesson uh, we hopefully all of us have learned in some way through the course of our lives. But uh, Nick, I just want to dig. I know we can't get into all the details here because it's just too big a story. But I I just want to confirm kind of the the crux of your story here. So essentially, this company, this larger company that you guys hired, they were tied up in what was seen as some unethical activity or some issues with the FTC. But instead of going after that company, they went after you, a smaller, much smaller company who has simply hired this other company. Not even you're not even you know associated with them in any, any other way other than than paying them money to send you clients. But and yet they did. Did they actually go after the the larger company as well? Or were, I mean, were you just kind of sucked into the whole thing? No, no. As a matter of fact, we sued that larger company and we're currently in active litigation. But the crazy part about it is between the FTC, the Attorney General, this company, and other companies. While I was in court battling to save my financial life, this company and the individual who sold me on purchasing referrals for them was doing a conference on ethics in online advertising for the FTC at the exact same time. That's the paradox. It's insane. Wow, that's Um, unbelievable. But there's, yeah, there's so many facets to it. I I wish I could, um, and I'm sure you and I can speak 
a lot offline about it, but it's pretty crazy. Wow. So, and you said that did, that did end up leading you to start Liberty Link Media Group. So where did your libertarian ideas come into play? Were those, were you already kind of leaning in that direction before this whole situation came up? Or, I mean, is, is this more of a recent development, your, your sort of your political ide- ideology? When I was in high school, it had much more to do with at the time I was raised in a fairly apolitical household. My family is mostly liberal. There's certainly some conservatives in my family, but mostly liberal. But I always had this nagging feeling on the financial side of things. I was always very financially, fiscally conservative, and nothing made sense to me the way that we ran the country from a financial standpoint. But I was also, since I had these liberal ideals, and, you know, listen, when you're, you know, late high school, early college, that kind of thing. Well, oh, great. I can be conservative, but nobody's going to mess with me socially and I can still smoke pot and do my thing and just do whatever I want to do. I like that. So you were starting to become in tune with the ideas of liberty on the philosophical level. Were you becoming politically active at that time at all? It it didn't matter to me as much at the time. It was just kind of, it was one of those things. And anybody who grew up at the time, you didn't have the internet, you didn't have access to these things. So I pretty much became apolitical throughout my 20s, late 20s, early 30s, became much more active and uh, started paying a lot of attention to Ron Paul and so much, so many things that, that I would be able to find and research myself online. And I remember saying to my wife so many times, this is proven. Look at, I mean, this is, this is real stuff. We have to do something about it. And she would always say to me, well, okay, you can either complain about it or do something. But if you don't do something, then just stop bothering me about it. Because if you, you know, just sitting here complaining about it and talking about it is not doing either one of us any good. So, you know, you get busy with life, you have kids, you do, you know, everything happens. And then a bolt of reality comes into your life and the the worst, truly the worst outside of the loss of a loved one happens to you. And it's a result of the state and you start reevaluating things. So I I really started delving into and it was during the Johnson campaign and looking at all the media that was being produced and everything that was coming out and all of the content. And I was like, you know, everyone in this country, at least a lot of the people I know, would be a libertarian if they just understood the the core ideology, because it's not it to me, it's not difficult. You don't need to read Rothbard, Rand, Mises. You don't you, you don't have to get into all of the details and be a bookworm in order to understand the basic principles of the NAP and, and the, the basic principles of the ideology. So I just felt that it was a, it was a failure to communicate. It was a failure on our part to not only produce higher quality media that people respond to and and in short little sound bites or however you know however we we choose to present a certain message but in addition to that it was a problem with the infighting within the party this well uh, you said something i disagree with so therefore, I'm not a libertarian. I'm shutting down my Facebook. Okay, I'm leaving the party. I, I, I want nothing to do with it anymore, which is so ironic to me because that's the, that's the foundation of the party is you do you, I'll do me. But if you do you, I want nothing to do with you. It's, it, it's, biz- <laughs> it's bizarre to me that, that they're just, there's so much infighting. And one of the best things that happened to me is I met Dustin Karad who uh, works with me every day and is one of the producers uh, here, and we work on all the projects together. And he's a, I guess you would consider, if you had to put a label on him, he would be a left libertarian. And I've always been, and if I had to label myself, more of a right libertarian. Hearing his point of view was so important to realize just how many of my own morals, my own belief system had carried on into my ideology and my political views. And it was affecting the way that I presented the ideas. And I had to really kind of take a a very close look at that. I, I was acting like a hypocrite. I was a bit of a hypocrite. And I see it now so much more clearly because I was willing to change. And now I see so many other people who do the same thing where, you know, oh, well, 
I'm all about freedom. I'm all about liberty until you stomp on my personal beliefs or my, my you know, something that I feel v- morally strong about. And then, you know, like the abortion issue or something like that. And then it becomes a problem. So did starting this company, Liberty Link, and kind of partnering with with Dustin Karat, who you mentioned there, uh, d- did that kind of help you give get some introspective into the way you were delivering the message? And, and actually, it's not like you just came in with Liberty Link Media and said, hey, I've got all the answers. Here's how you send, send the right message. It was actually a, a growth process for yourself as well. Absolutely. What I brought in was not only the production side of things, but the knowledge of marketing, branding, and how you develop brand recognition, whether it's for a politician, for an organization, for a company, and how you just need to hammer it, hammer it, hammer it. As you know, I mean, you have a successful podcast, you know, it's repetition. It's the more, the more you do, the more people start recognizing it, and it has to be constant. It can't be a once and done kind of thing. So I brought all of that to the table. I also brought my libertarian ideals, which again, I see so often in a lot of the uh, right leaning libertarians. And, you know, I don't want to say the Alex Jones crowd, but a lot of, you know, the, the, the crowd that is the Trumpetarians, right? I don't know if that's what they call them, but the, you know, the libertarians who, who support Donald Trump. When ideas can kind of go to the wayside to populism at times. Exactly. Exactly. I didn't go all the way in that direction, but I, I certainly allowed my personal beliefs, you know, the fact that, that in my life, I don't support abortion. But I also don't think that the government should have anything to do with whether or not a woman has an abortion. And, and you know, again, that's the, it's the legislation of morality. So I needed to stop acting Republican light. And, and it became so easy. Once I realized where I was allowing my own bias to interrupt my thought process, my mental flow, everything I was doing, then communicating the message became that much easier. But believe me, there are still plenty of people that have a huge problem with our message because it strikes a chord with their morals. Do you think that's one of the things to get over when we're trying to speak to people that really don't understand the ideology fully or really even at all, or maybe they just have a a straw man conception of it, when we try to sort of present to them an idea that on the surface goes against their core beliefs, uh, but we're really trying to show them a a different way to think about those beliefs. So, you know, for example, if if someone is really holds a belief that the nuclear family is the best way to go, it's the best way to raise children or what have you, you can consistently hold that belief. But to then move over into the political realm and advocate a world where you aren't forced into that. You are allowed to form relationships with people of an opposite sex. You're allowed to have a non-nuclear family. And then but then for certain people, those two things might be just too difficult to reconcile. So what do you think is the right approach to people like that who you really want to get them on board and you want to show them that there can be a separation between your personal morality, your personal beliefs and how you apply that to government? I mean, how how do you overcome that challenge? How did you overcome that for yourself? I'm of the belief that it doesn't matter whether they are a... um, you know, sort of a a right-leaning libertarian or a populist, or they're on the other side of the spectrum and they are a Bernie Sanders supporter socialist. Finding common ground is the best way to get into any conversation and to start changing minds. You can't ever expect to get into a conversation And to immediately start berating a a person for being a statist or by immediately harping on where they're wrong. Everybody wants to be right, but by harping on where they're wrong and the problems in their ideology, that immediately shuts down every conversation. Those people will shut you off. You may feel like you're winning, but you're not. You're losing because you've already lost the ability to change their mind by battling them and making them feel like they're not as smart as you or they don't have as much knowledge or they're not as well read or any of those things. You, you, the, the common ground. So in a situation, let's say somebody, uh, in the nuclear family, and start to, to open up some kind of dialogue that at least makes them feel like you care and you understand about their situation 
rather than just immediately putting them down. That's never won any conversation. Uh, it's why I'm not a fan of social justice warrior, statist, uh, you know, any of these these terms that get flung around only serve to hurt our chances and our ideology moving forward. That's the problem with labels overall. They're almost always an attack, whether it's an attack on somebody outside of your beliefs or even when it comes to infighting, when people you might fling terms like anarchist, sadist. All these terms come loaded with beliefs that might not necessarily and probably don't because they're just one word. They can't possibly reflect the entirety of someone's beliefs. Uh, they might not necessarily reflect the person, the beliefs of the person you're flinging them at or that are flinging them. Uh, the second we move from a conversation, like you said, to a battle, you've already lost because once you're in a battle, you've lost any ability to to really convince anyone of anything. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I, My wife and I go back and forth a lot. She's a forensic psychologist. She works with a lot of substance abusers. It, it, they need help. They don't need to be locked in a cage. And she recognizes that. But she gets concerned. We have a six-year-old. She doesn't want some, somebody peddling heroin to our child uh, when he gets into his early teen years. But it's the question of where that line is drawn. We just had a discussion about it last night. There was a, another situation with new legislation passed through Congress that now it will put mandatory minimums on sexting laws for literally you could be a 17 year old kid who, you know, gets a, a picture from their 15 or 16 year old girlfriend and you could literally be subject to 15 years mandatory minimums. Now, there's a lot of people that say, well, yeah, the feds aren't going to pursue those charges. I mean, there, there's a lot of uh, small time drug dealers in jail right now who might have uh, thought that, too. Oh, they'll never, they'll never put us in jail for 30 years for this. Well, they're there now. Exactly. And I said to my wife, I said, listen, honey, you have to understand that with our situation, with as many things as they have tried to lie and pin on us that we had absolutely nothing to do with, that if they could somehow put our son in danger and make it so that that was a negotiation tactic that we could then end up in a really, really terrible spot where we needed to do something in order to get our son out of trouble, how many other situations out there are like that where people are constantly either being set up or put into a position where they're forced into reconciling a situation because the state has all the power. I don't understand how we can give full power, full and, and people trust it. Even the, all of the liberals that I know trust that even though their guy isn't in power, it's still okay to continue to make laws constantly that put us at risk. You see all the outrage uh, to Trump leaving the, the Paris Agreement or the Paris Accord, whatever, whatever they want to call it. And then those same people are, are they're outraged because the federal government is not going to be regulating climate emissions. But then they're forgetting that the guy they hate, Trump, is the one in charge of the federal government and all that regulations. So, it, you know, there, there's a disconnect here between what, what sometimes what they think they want and, and the reality of it. And it's only because that's what they hear. They hear on the news, they hear Anderson Cooper, whoever they listen to, tell them that this was a bad thing because Trump hates the environment, Trump hates the climate, and that's why he got out of the, the Paris Accord, or the government told them that we need to be in the Paris Accord because we need to save the environment. One should have nothing to do with the other. The fact that we got out of the Paris Accord doesn't mean that we hate the environment. It means that we thought that it was a bad deal for the U.S., which it was. Uh, it certainly was, Nick. And one thing that is not a bad deal, however, is the one that is being offered by today's sponsor. I firmly believe one of the most important things you can do to protect yourself and your loved ones is to own a firearm. But for a lot of people, buying a gun can be an overwhelming process. There are just so many options and not everyone feels comfortable walking into a gun store. Well, our friends at martinarmory.com are doing their part to change that. Martin Armory was founded with a simple goal to make buying a gun simple and affordable. Instead of carrying thousands of different guns, MartinArmory.com only carries 25. This allows them to focus on providing the most popular guns on the market at insanely cheap prices. And now for a limited time, their prices are even more insane as MartinArmory.com is offering Lions of Liberty listeners free shipping. Simply go to MartinArmory.com, pick an awesome gun, and enter the promo code LIONS. Again, that's MartinArmory.com. The promo code is LIONS.
Uh, Nick, I really want to dig in a little bit more to uh, to the actual work you guys are doing at, at Liberty Link Media Group. So why don't you describe, uh, first of all, your actual mission? What 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 gap out there were you seeing that really needed to be filled uh, when it came to video production in the Liberty Movement? And how exactly are you guys doing that? I know you've got your daily headlines. You've got a partnership with Being Libertarian. You're, you're doing so much out there. So why don't you just lay it all out for everybody? Our entire goal was to bring a level of professionalism video, media, and content to the liberty movement that didn't exist. I saw uh, convention footage. I saw commercials of libertarian candidates. I saw organizations, with the exception of some. Don't get me wrong. There are organizations out there. Learn Liberty is one of them. Um, there's, There's definitely organizations out there that put out really, really solid content. So it's not everyone. But I saw so much that if it was if it just had a cleaner more professional look to it it would be taken seriously by people on the right and left who may be looking for a new political home so we thought it was absolutely imperative to bring that level of professionalism to the movement now i also realize that and <laughs> this has become even more apparent the more active i've gotten in the libertarian party and the liberty movement is that we're skeptical, right? We're skeptical people to begin with, and it is, it's always going to be a process. So without some brand recognition and without uh, some activism out there to really show off what it is that you do and what it is that you believe, that's the best way, in my opinion, to show the world that this works. So that's why we developed the daily headlines. They were never meant to be Uh, you know, some high quality uh, projects. They were meant to be done on a daily basis. And we really didn't even expect them to be all that popular, but just to be able to get the message out there and have consistent content going out so that we could then start working with candidates, organizations, and companies in the liberty movement who needed to up their game if they ever hoped to have any chance of winning or breaking through the two-party paradigm in this country. So we did that. The headlines became successful. We partnered with Being Libertarian, and they became more successful. Fortunately, very early on, I contacted and uh, started working with the Libertarian Party on some projects, uh, as well as the Libertarian Party of Pennsylvania, and since then, have started working with several candidates as well to develop a media strategy for them, because these are people who realize what we're doing and the importance of putting out professional content. I mean, all, all you have to do is put libertarian promo or libertarian candidate into YouTube or Facebook and watch some of the commercials and content that's being produced. And don't get me wrong, I understand why that is. I understand that there's there's just not money flowing into the Libertarian Party the way there is the other two parties. The FEC ruling that came down that ruled in favor of third parties when it came to getting into the debates said that it would cost the average third party candidate $266 million to gain the brand recognition necessary to eclipse the 15% threshold in order to get into the debate. <laughs> they may as well say that you need to use magic. Like, I mean, it's, it's, it's as realistic, I mean, for, for a third party to, to earn that amount of money as it is to, you know, do just about anything. Exactly. So the way I look at that, in 2017, the perfect storm has come about. Donald Trump was elected as the leader of the free world. And in addition to that, the Libertarian Party is the fastest growing party in the country, regardless of how much people may sort of downplay the successes that the Libertarian Party has had. It's the fastest growing political party in the country, and it's prime because of social media to be able to make a dent in that, because that $266 million is talking about traditional advertising. But you have one video, whether it's something for a candidate or a a, a short commercial, maybe it needs to be edgy. But if it's well done and it has that potential of going viral, then that candidate has a chance of having as much brand recognition as the other two parties. And that's never happened before. So to be able to do that, that's the key, to be able to put out enough content that you you have a chance of becoming that well-known and breaking out of the echo chamber and 
those things have never existed before. We've never had that opportunity. I mean, even even back in 2012, 2014, we didn't have the ability as much as we do today to be able to break that paradigm, that two-party paradigm. Well, Nick, hopefully, thanks to people like yourself who are really out there and trying to present this message in a, I don't want to say more palatable way, because you're not watering anything down, but in a more professional way, in a way that's simply going to reach more people. It's not even a matter of if. It's, it's a fact. If you produce something that is more high quality, that's more like what people are used to seeing on TV, you're going to have more credibility. So I'm so glad that there is Liberty Link, Link Media, that you guys are out there leading the way in this kind of thing. So before I let you go, Nick, why don't you just give one more roundup of how everybody can reach you guys uh, on social media, your website, how they can contact you if they're interested in working with you guys. Sure, absolutely. They can go to uh, libertylinkmedia.com. You can also uh, reach out directly by going to beinglibertarian.com. We are going to be announcing some uh, more comprehensive partnerships with them going forward and will be their production arm for a lot of projects moving forward. So you can go to beinglibertarian.com. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook, YouTube, all backslash Liberty Link Media. That's about it. Well, Nicholas Vieser, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Keep up the great work. Keep on roaring. Great. Thanks, Mark. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed my conversation today with Nicholas Vieser of Liberty Link Media media. And, you know, Nick was only really able to, to scratch the surface of his situation with his business uh, when he talked about that at the beginning of the show. We did talk about that a little bit more off air. And, and I got to say, man, it's it's really impressive to me that he is able to not only bounce back because it's not even over, he's still dealing with the situation, but to channel uh, the anger, the frustration, any of the emotions that he might be building up over this into a positive project into the work he's doing at Liberty Link Media. And really, if if, if we're going to get people to take the ideas of liberty seriously, they have to be presented at some point in a professional way. Uh, that's the idea, in theory, behind having a a smooth politician as your libertarian uh, presidential candidate. Now, eh, we might argue if they actually achieved that in the last year, uh, but that's the idea. The idea is that you want to present someone more professional. You want to present things in a professional way, and you do need to do that. We can't just be producing grainy videos that are that are shot in the back of our car. Now, nothing wrong with that, if that's what you're doing. Uh, I'm not, I have nobody in mind when I say that. I don't think I've even seen a video shot in the back of the car. But my, the point being, you really got to up the standards and up the game. Now, if you go back and listen to the first episode of this program, audio wasn't great. Hosting wasn't great. I had kind of no clue of what I was doing. However, since that time, I have worked hard to maintain a higher audio quality standard as we go. And it's not always perfect. It's not always perfect because we're dealing with a lot of different things. We're dealing with technology. We're dealing with digital calls over the cross of the country. But at the end of the day, I put in a lot of effort with our equipment, with the way I edit the show, to make sure that you guys have a pleasurable listening experience because we need to raise the standard. And that's exactly what Liberty Link Media is doing, and what Nicholas Wieser has been channeling all of that energy into. He's doing some really impressive work. In fact, why don't you do it right now? You're listening to this program either on a computer or on a uh, smartphone or an iPad or something, something that most likely has internet access. So just go over to Facebook, type in Liberty Link Media, hit that follow button, and you'll get all those daily headlines, and you'll see all the great work that they are doing over there at Liberty Link Media. And while you're over there on the Facebooks, why don't you come and join our private Facebook group. You can join this conversation and give some feedback, some input on the show by coming over and joining the Lions of Liberty Forum. You just type Lions of Liberty Forum in that little search bar on Facebook. It'll pop right up. And as long as you look like a real human, somebody that's probably interested in this political conversation will go ahead and let you right in. Now, I'm just going to keep firing away at things to check out. While you're already here on the internet, following all of my orders diligently, like good little Liberty kittens, I really want you to go ahead and check out Walk the Walk. This is a group that was created by Clint Rankin, a fan of the show, a member of the Lions of Liberty Pride. You can find it by searching Walk the Walk on Facebook. Uh, we'll, of course, link to it in today's show notes at lionsofliberty.com slash 301. And you can also find it, the website, by going over to walkthewalkforfreedom.com. Now, the purpose of this group is to really corral members of the Liberty community and to fund specific charitable pro projects through the DonorC app. That's DonorC app, D-O-N-O-R-S-E-E, -E, Go ahead to DonorC.com or download that app. And we're currently funding a project that was posted by the creator of the DonorC app, a past guest on this show, Gret Glyer. What they're doing is funding an entire well for a village in Malawi. Currently, they have to walk 45 minutes each way to get water from a dirty swamp. People die from 
from getting diseases from this water. They have to spend so much time and effort just to get water to live every single day. But they're going to build a well in their village so they'll have access to clean water and they won't have to make that walk. It's really going to dramatically improve the lives of 300 families. And you can do this all by going over to DonorSeat, whether it's the app, whether it's the website. You can either look for me, uh, Mark Clare. You can search for Gret Glyer. It should be very easy for you to find that project. And again, we'll also link to it over at today's show notes, lionsofliberty.com slash 301. And folks, if you enjoy what we do here at Lions of Liberty, I encourage you to share this program. Share it with your family. Share it with your friends. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single episode. Of course, like I mentioned at the top of the show, we do have three very unique programs every week. You've got this show where I do interviews, occasionally libertarians in living rooms drinking liquor roundtables, which all the kids love out there. We also got Brian on Wednesdays with Electric Liberty Land and John Odie Odermatt every single Friday with Felony Friday. We really do pride ourselves on the great variety we provide you here while still remaining focused on the ideas of liberty. And of course, if you just can't get enough, you can always join our private group, the Lions of Liberty Pride. These are the guys that are helping us fund and support this show and eventually to grow it to even greater levels. And as a return, you get all sorts of bonus content. We've really been putting out uh, a lot of stuff there. You get early release access to certain episodes, such as episode 300 with Jason Stapleton and Larry Sharp. You also get a bunch of random bonus segments that we've been doing. We did a Felony Friday bonus last week where we talked about the Philando Castile ruling, as well as that girl who basically talked her boyfriend into killing himself. A couple really interesting cases there. We didn't have time to fit that into the main shows, so we did a bonus segment, and you'll see a lot of that stuff. So it really does get you a lot of extra content by joining that Pride for as little as just $5 a month. So if you love all the free content you're getting from us three days a week, that's a lot of free stuff. If you just can't get enough, be sure to go ahead and check out the Lions of Liberty Pride. You can find more info at lionsofliberty.com slash support. Until next time, folks, live long and live free.